Hello, and welcome to Apex Math. Today we're going to talk briefly about bridging the gap between common core mathematics and the way parents have been taught, and specifically regarding lattice multiplication. And in common core, there is a lot of um, people who are against uh, common core, and there's a lot of good reasons for that. And some of the reasons are that uh, the way the students are being taught math is not the same way that parents were taught math. So they bring home homework and the parents don't understand it. They bring home homework that the parents can't help their children with because they didn't do math this way. And the parents don't really understand the point behind uh, some of these assignments that are being done. And um, although I think there are some uh, good things behind Common Core, you know, many students learn differently. And giving students uh, different ways to solve uh, mathematics is helpful because what may work for one may not work for another. Uh, so giving multiple methods can be helpful. Um, however, with that said, um, the child needs to be able to choose what methods work for them. And if something doesn't work for them and is confusing for them, they should not be forced into trying to work with something that doesn't make sense to them. And that's where we're kind of pushing Common Core a little bit too hard is that students are told, well, here's the new method and you have to use this. And then it confuses them rather than here are a whole bunch of different methods. Let's find out which one works with your learning style. And then that's the method that you're welcome to use. That should be our approach if we're going to teach these different methods of learning to multiply, um, add, subtract, etc. And additionally, as I said, it becomes difficult for parents who want to help their children but have never seen these types of methods before. And the, the child comes home with a lattice multiplication problem and the parents don't even know what it means. And the, the parent is used to the standard algorithm and can only help the child with that approach. And it's great that parents are helping their children. And if the student learns it, through the standard algorithm, through the help of their parent, then again, that should be allowed. They shouldn't be forced to, you have to multiply using lattice multiplication. However, from some students that I have found, um, lattice multiplication was the only thing that made sense to them. So giving them that opportunity to grasp onto that if the standard algorithm doesn't work, uh, that's an excellent opportunity. So we need to really look at what's the goal behind teaching these alternative methods and allowing students to have the opportunity to just work through the problems in whatever way makes the most sense to them rather than pushing them to do one way or the other. Um, additionally, you know, we're looking at Common Core at trying to build more number sets. So students will get worksheets that come home again that may not make sense to the parents but as a math educator, I can look at it and say, oh, I understand the concept behind that. And that's teaching this particular shortcut to math or this idea behind number sets. Uh, but if the teacher doesn't provide that link to the student and just shows it to them in an abstract manner and the child just fills out the form and no links are made, then it completely defeats the purpose behind what Common Core is trying to teach. And that's what I keep seeing so much of is that students come home with these worksheets and they fill in this information that's supposed to be linking these concepts together. However, the child doesn't have the link. The parents don't know. Um, Parents need to be educated in the way their children are being taught and feel comfortable with the way their children are being taught and be able to provide support to their child. Additionally, um, our teachers need to make sure that they understand why are we teaching this and what are the links we're providing for students and what are our goals behind this. And this is where I think we rushed into Common Core and we did not provide 
the teachers with the information and education that they need to achieve the goals that the folks that wrote Common Core set out to have to begin with. Now, I'm speaking from the math perspective only. I, I don't know too much about Common Core um, in the other disciplines, but um, let's take a look at lattice multiplication in Common Core mathematics. So a student may have to do um, 26 times 13. So there's a bunch of different ways that this problem can be taught. And again, the idea in theory behind Common Core should be that they have multiple ways that they can learn this and decide which one makes sense for them. And uh, for some, it, it just is very algorithmic, and they don't even know why they're doing it. And, and that's the idea behind Common Core is we don't want students performing procedures without understanding, well, why am I doing that? Um, so that is one of the things that we're trying to avoid, but that's not necessarily going to be achieved just by teaching them multiple methods, because I don't know that they get why they're supposed to do it using lattice versus a standard algorithm. Um, more of that actually can be taught by using like expanded notation would be a more conceptual way to teach um, the concept behind the multiplication and the place value when multiplying a two digit times a two digit. So um, I've seen this provide more conceptual understanding while this is again, algorithmic, and lattice tends to be algorithmic as well. So let's take a look at the standard algorithm here. If we have 26 times 13, um, the way most parents learn to do this was they would take this number here and they'd multiply it. 6 times 3 is 18. They put the 8 down here and they carry the 1. Um, again, I ask you, do you understand why the 8 is put here and the 1 is carried here? Do you understand that the place value is that the 8 is in the 1's place and this is the 1's place column and the 1 is in the 10's place and this is the 10's place column? So, you know, when you're teaching this to your child um, as an educator or as a parent, making those connections for your children rather than just showing them the procedural steps is, is vital to their future understanding. Um, so then we do 3 times 2, which is 6, and then we add 1 here, which is 7. But what we're really doing is 3 times 20, remember here, because this is not really a 2. This is a 20 because it's in that tens place there. So that's why we get a 7 here. But again, this is a 70 because it is also in the tens place. So then this becomes the biggest sticking point. Most students get this part okay, but then they don't understand why do they put a zero or sometimes an X or leave it blank. Um, but this algorithmic part of putting a zero here and then moving into this next column and why is that done? Well, that's, again, one of the things we're trying to address in Common Core is making sure they understand that concept between um, this idea of place value going on here. So the zero is put here because now we're multiplying in the tens place only. So we're doing um, a 10 times a 6. So our answer is going to end up here in this tens place. It's not going to be uh, a value that is a units value or a ones place unit anymore because we're multiplying in the tens place. So we are in that column now. So all of our future answers have to be in that column or over further into future place values. So if we multiply the 1 times the 6, we get 6. There's nothing to carry. So then we do 1 times the 2, and we put a 2. And then again, we add these two. So that becomes another question. Well, why are these two things added? If you think about the algorithm overall, it's kind of confusing um, that we kind of do all these steps. But you know, why are we doing it? Why do we add this to this? So we get 8, and then 7 plus 6 is 13, and we carry the 1, and we get 338. So if we look at it more as an expanded notation, um, again, you can sort of build the concept behind what you're doing a lot better. And some uh, teachers may be teaching this that I've seen in the Common Core as well. So if I take the 3 and I multiply it times the 6, I get 18. 
And then I take the 3 and I multiply it times the 20. And students have learned that when you multiply things that have a 0, you multiply the 3 times the 2, you get a 6, and then you add the 0 um, on the end. And so that takes care of the 3 times each of these guys. Then we go and we multiply the 10 times each of these. So 10 times 6 is another 60. And then 10 times 20 is 200. So those become the individual pieces, which make a lot more sense conceptually rather than just putting down place value zeros and knowing that you need to add. Now I know that I've added up all the different parts to this, and I can add this together and get my 338. So let's take a look now at the lattice multiplication. So lattice multiplication, the reason behind using lattice multiplication is that it's an organization for students. And um, filling in boxes makes things much easier for students to be able to keep track of. And that's why lattice multiplication is um, used, is for the fact that it is uh, an organizational way for students to keep track of where the numbers go. So if I do this, and this down here. And I take 26, and then I'm going to multiply it times 13. So I'm going to put the 13 down here. So I basically make this grid here, where I've got th this number on top here, and then this number down here. Then I create these diagonal lines that go through the boxes that I'm using in my grid system. And so now it's kind of like before, except that we don't really have that this is a 20. So again, it's not really conceptual because this is actually 20 and 6, and this is 10 and 3. But if we just multiply it regularly, for each box, we look at the, the column heading and the row heading, and we multiply, and we do 6 times 1. And so that gives us 6. And we put a 0 in front if it's a one-digit number. So we have to make sure students understand that we can write 6 as 0, 6. So then they look at this box, and they do 6 times 3. Well, that's 18. So they put 18 in that box. Then they come over here and do 2 times 1, and that's 2. And then they do 2 times 3, and that's 6. So all they're really doing here is four different multiplication facts, which is pretty easy for students. So they kind of like that. And the next step is that they are going to just add along these diagonals to get their answers. So if we do it, it, under this diagonal line right here, and the green were the answers that we wrote, we can see that the only thing in green here to add is 8. So we get 8 down here. If we look in the next diagonal line, which is between this set of numbers in green here, we can see we have to add 6, 1, and 6. So 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 1 more is 13. So just like any other adding, we're going to write our 3, and we're going to have to carry that 1 up to the next diagonal line. So then we do look at our next diagonal line, and we have the 1 and the 2, and then that gives us a 3 there. So, and then we read our answer in this direction. So we read it as 338 is the answer. So it's a nice, organized, easy approach, and it actually requires a lot less voodoo math for the student um, than the standard algorithm. Because in that standard algorithm, they kind of have to put that placeholder in, and that doesn't have to be done here. All they have to do is set up the grids, multiply in each box, add along those diagonals, and they get their answer. So, um, you know, I have to say that, you know, lattice multiplication is a, a good strategy for the beginning student. Now, the problem becomes is we don't want students to use this lattice multiplication method for uh, an extended period of time because it's very 
cumbersome and, and time consuming to write out this whole grid and, and everything like that. So you end up with the problem that even though that they learned the lattice multiplication and it worked for them, that they still have to go back and learn that standard algorithm eventually uh, simply because they don't have the speed that's neat, that you can get from using the standard algorithm by using the lattice. So the question becomes, well, is it worth it to teach the lattice to begin with if they're just going to have to eventually use the standard algorithm in order to be able to do higher level math where we have to quickly be able to say, oh, what is uh, 13 times 26 and get that answer quickly. So, um, but again, I repeat that for the student who's struggling with that standard algorithm and you can provide them with an alternative that is easy and works for them, then you know anything that gives them success and allows them to um, be able to, to move forward, you know, that's what we should be focusing on at this point in time. If they get the standard algorithm and it's easy, you know, they should have the option between working between these two. And eventually, um, they will learn that even if they did choose the lattice method, that they can pick up as they mature and develop that standard algorithm much quicker, quicker later on than they could necessarily to begin with. So um, don't write off you know, the idea of these alternative methods. But again, keep in mind that the purpose behind them should be to figure out what process makes things easiest for your child and helps them be successful in math. It's not a goal of let's try to make things as difficult for the parents or um, make things confusing for the students. So I hope this video allowed um, you to have some thought behind why we are providing these alternatives for students. Um, but have a talk with your teacher, uh, your student's teacher, about you know making sure that the child is able to use whatever works for them because the ultimate goal is that they understand and are capable of doing math and that they have successes and they feel good about themselves as a learner in mathematics. Uh, I don't think we stress that enough is that we want to have students that have positive experiences in math and anything that's causing them frustration when we don't have to should definitely be avoided. I hope you enjoyed this video in Apex Math, and I hope our little lesson on lattice multiplication helps you understand it a little bit better if your child does decide that that is the approach that they would prefer to work with for now. Thank you, and um, please go ahead and like our videos and visit our other ones. Um, we try to provide unique um, uh, tricks and uh, ideas behind teaching math um, that the students won't always get to see in the classroom.